back to Global Value. Today, we're performing a fundamental stock analysis of Heineken NV, ticker symbol H-E-N-Y, Heine. This is the company's over-the-counter listing in the United States. That currently trades at $52.59 per share. Over the last year, Heineken's stock price is up 10.5%, so this is drastically outperforming the S&P 500. Over the last five years, Heineken's stock price is down 2.5%. Over the last 10 years, their stock price is compounding at a rate of 3.5% annually, so their stock price is up 40 percent overall during this period. And going back prior to the global financial crisis, over the last 18 years, Heineken has compounded their stock price at a rate of 6.5% annually. Keep in mind that the company does pay out dividends, and their average dividend yield throughout this time frame would be in addition to this compounded annual return. Right now, Heineken has about a 1.2% dividend yield. So Heineken is trading at their 52-week highs, which are $13 above their 52-week lows. Heineken is a large business. They have a 56 billion euro market cap, which is around 60.5 billion US dollars. For more background about the business, Heineken is Western Europe's largest beer producer, selling 231 million hectoliters in 2021, and following the Anheuser-Busch InBev acquisition of SAB Miller, it is the world's second largest brewer. It has the leading position in many European markets, including the Netherlands, Austria, Greece, and Italy. Its flagship brand, Heineken, is the world's leading international premium lager and has spawned several brand extensions. Its brand portfolio spans non-alcoholic, Belgian, and craft beer. Heineken is also the world's biggest cider producer. The company offers its products to retailers, bars, pubs, hotels, and restaurants in Europe, the Americas, Africa, the Middle East, Eastern Europe, and Asia Pacific markets. The company was founded in 1864 and is based in Amsterdam, the Netherlands. So for our fundamental analysis today, we are performing the select six analysis, taking a checklist style approach of six standard financial metrics to come to a holistic and beginning understanding of Heineken based off of their business fundamentals. So this analysis is still a work in progress and it's an opportunity to learn in public. So it will continue to improve and get better over time. With that said, let's get right into today's analysis. Starting things off with metric number one, we want their average return on capital over the last five years to be above 14%. And there are two key reasons for this. The first is that over the long run, over the course of decades, a stock is likely to return approximately what its underlying business returns. And these business returns are going to be captured here by return on capital. The second is that the typical publicly listed business earns about a 7% return on capital. So by asking for a benchmark of 14% or higher, we can potentially build in some margin of safety for ourselves based off the overall quality of the business being about twice as good as average. So Heineken's return on capital has fluctuated somewhat here. Their returns went down to a low of 6% in 2020. Since then, they have rebounded, however, as the world has reopened from the COVID-19 global pandemic shutdowns. Averaged out over this time frame, Heineken is earning about a 9% average return on capital. While that's a couple percentage points above the typical returns that a business earns, that's below that 14% benchmark we're ideally looking for. And so this is an X to start things off here on metric number one for Heineken. Next up for metric number two, here we're taking a high level overview of Heineken's growth. We're looking for revenue, net income, and free cash flow growth over these last five years. So over this time frame, Heineken has grown their revenues by 28%. Their earnings are growing even faster than this, growing by 40%. And although their free cash flows have grown as well, their free cash flows are up at the these lowest rate out of all three of these, growing about 8% overall. Because all three of these are up, this is our first check of the day coming in here on metric number two for Heineken. Next up for metric number three, here we're taking the perspective of an individual shareholder in Heineken by looking at the company on a per share basis. So we're looking for earnings per share growth over the last five years. As we just learned, they've grown their earnings by 40% over the last five years, but we also want to take a look at what they've done in terms of their shares outstanding. It doesn't seem like there's much to say about their shares outstanding because Heineken has only marginal diluted existing shareholders by 1%. Ideally, we don't like to see any shareholder dilution or even better than that. We'd like to see that a business is buying back their shares when their stock is trading for below its intrinsic value and it looks like an attractive use of their capital relative to some of their other opportunities. Either way though, with this only marginal shareholder dilution and their 40% earnings growth, this has led to earnings per share growth for Heineken over the last five years. So this is a check on metric number three. In their most recent fiscal year, the business earned $4.98 for each share that they had outstanding. 
Next up for metric number four, here we're looking for free cash flow per share growth over the last five years for the business. So this metric is going to be very similar. Their free cash flows are slightly up over this time frame, and that's outpacing their marginal shareholder dilution. So this is a check here on metric number four as well, as over their last 12 months, Heineken has produced $4.62 worth of free cash flow for each share that they have had outstanding. And recapping where we stand currently, through our first four metrics, we have three checks and only one X for Heineken. Next up for metric number five, here we're evaluating how Heineken is utilizing debt. So we don't want to be investing in overly levered businesses because during economic downturns, it's likely that overly levered businesses will be at the greatest risk for poor potential business outcomes. So we want their net debt, which is their total debt minus their cash and their short-term investments to be below the amount of free cash flow that the business has produced over their last five years. Heineken has increased their net debt position throughout this time frame, although since 2019, they have been paying this down somewhat. Currently, the business has a $14.6 billion net debt position, and over these last five years, Heineken has produced $13.7 billion worth of free cash flow in total. So that's about a billion dollars shy of their net debt currently, meaning that this is an X here on metric number five, as it doesn't look like their free cash flows over this time frame are able to support this debt load. If we were to extrapolate their current free cash flows out over the next five years, it looks like that would just be about where their net debt position is right now. So this may not be as much of a potential concern here for Heineken as it would be for some other types of businesses, both because their current free cash flows extrapolated forward would be closer to their net debt position and given the nature of Heineken's business as a well-established consumer brand. If you're interested in learning more about Heineken's debt position, you would want to dig into the company's filings. It's likely that they'll break out this debt in more detail, providing information about how it's structured, when it matures, what rates it's at, and and if there are any particular covenants associated with this debt. Again, though, this is an X on metric number five. Then our sixth and final metric, the big metric of them all, we want their average free cash flow to their total enterprise value to give us a yield that's above 5%. If this is the case, this might provide us with a slight risk premium to the yield of the 10-year treasury, and it may offer us a reasonable starting point for evaluation of Heineken. We're using their total enterprise value because it's going to give us a perspective of Heineken's business that's more similar to as if Heineken were a private company. It does this by taking into account both their market cap and their net debt position. Right now, Heineken has a $76.5 billion total enterprise value, and we learned in their previous five years that the business has produced $13.7 billion worth of free cash flow, meaning that in an average year, Heineken produces about $2.7 billion worth of free cash flow. So when we divide their $2.7 billion of their average free cash flow by their $76.5 Half billion dollar total enterprise value that gives us about a three and a half percent average free cash flow to enterprise value yield for Heineken. So that's both below that risk premium and it's below the yield of the 10 year treasury as well. So this is an X here on metric number six based off Heineken's average free cash flows to get a current free cash flow to enterprise value yield for the business. When we divide their two point nine billion dollars of their most recent fiscal years worth of free cash flow by their seventy six and a half billion dollar total enterprise value. That gives us about a 3.8% current free cash flow to enterprise value yield for Heineken. So while that is better than where they've been at historically, that's also below the yield of the 10-year treasury and that risk premium as well. So this is an X on both a current and an average basis for metric number six. Just because this is the case doesn't mean that you're going to toss Heineken out in its entirety. This analysis is holistic in nature and it's meant to be a starting point. It's not financial advice and it's not a buy or sell recommendation of any security. While these metrics are simple, when they're combined together, they can be very powerful. And even even though this is our final metric, you'll want to stick around to the end of the video because Heineken still has some interesting aspects of their business left to cover. As a bonus, here we're looking at Heineken's dividend profile. So currently Heineken pays out a 1.2% dividend yield. We want to look at a company's dividend to analyze whether it's healthy and whether it's supported by either their earnings or their free cash flows, depending on the type of business. For Heineken, we want their dividend to be supported by their free cash flows. And that's been the case in all five of these years. Heineken's dividend payouts have fluctuated throughout this time frame, and it doesn't perfectly correspond with any sort of payout ratio for their free cash flows, although their dividends have been increasing since 2020 after the company slashed them during the COVID-19 pandemic lockdowns. So if you're potentially interested in Heineken based off its abilities to return capital to shareholders, you'd want to dig in to do more work here to understand what is management's approach to capital allocation going forward and understand how they're thinking about their dividend payouts relative to some of their other potential uses for their free cash flows. 
flows. Then everything we've discussed so far is important, but there's something missing that in my opinion is the main reason to analyze Heineken, which takes us on to using a discounted cash flow model to come to a potential fair intrinsic value for the business. So a discounted cash flow model is just like any other model in any other discipline. Its outputs are going to be sensitive to its inputs, and it's really useful based off the predictability of a business's cash flows. Here we're starting with Heineken's current free cash flows per share, and we're using historical growth assumptions for how Heineken has grown their free cash flows over their past decade in order to project these out into the future. So it's up to you to do your own homework here to determine whether or not these historical growth assumptions are going to be accurate and applicable going forward to give us a baseline projected estimate for Heineken over their next 20 years. However, if we assume that the business grows their current free cash flows at a rate of 5% annually for the next 10 years, and then they grow their free cash flows at a rate of 4% annually for the 10 years out after that, if we were seeking a 15% rate of return from Heineken, which is the rate of return that Warren Buffett is looking for from his investments, based off of today's valuations of Heineken, it looks like a potential fair intrinsic value for the business would be around $41 per share. So that would be just very slightly above the company's 52-week lows, but that would be about $12 below their current stock price. So it looks like at today's valuations of the business that Heineken would be trending toward being more overly valued than more fairly valued. There are some caveats that you'll want to keep in mind here. One is that this discount rate would include their dividend yield. While it is a slight yield of 1.2%, we would not be doubly counting their dividends. Also, Heineken has not had the most predictable free cash flows in the past 10 years as some other types of businesses. So there are reasons why their free cash flows may or may not continue this pattern into the future as well. Please be mindful that this type of analysis is not financial advice. It's not a buy or sell recommendation of any security. And before considering any potential investment decision, please consult with the properly licensed and registered legal and financial professionals. So in just a minute, we'll talk about our summary for Heineken, but we have to address something first. What are some of the qualitative aspects of this business, especially those that support the key points for either a potential long or potential short thesis of Heineken? Starting with some of the key points around a potential a long thesis for the business. Number one, Heineken is the global leader in cider, a category that is growing around two and a half times faster than beer, and several key markets offer significant room for growth. Number two, although it will weigh on its return on invested capital, the acquisition of Punch Taverns means Heineken controls almost 3,000 pubs in the United Kingdom, potentially a competitive advantage that will give it direct feedback from consumers in a competitive market. And number three, the premium portfolio includes Heineken, the only true global premium lager, Aflagem, Laguntas, and Bira Moretti. Heineken is well positioned to capture market share through premiumization. Then for some of the key points around a potential short thesis for the business, number one, despite its acquisitions of Asia Pacific Brewery, Heineken remains under-indexed in the growing Asian market, which represents just 12% of sales in 2021. Number two, Heineken was late to the game in craft beer, and its recent acquisition of Laguntas remains its only exposure to the fast-growing category. And number three, Europe accounts for nearly one-third of Heineken's earnings before interest or tax, but pricing is weak in the highly competitive Western Europe market, while unfavorable demographics are putting pressure on volume in Eastern Europe. So hopefully that offers a potentially balanced perspective around some of the key qualitative aspects of the business. Now it's time for our summary. So with Heineken checking the box on three of our six metrics today, it looks like the business is a moderate candidate for further research. The company is earning average returns on capital of about 9%, so just a couple of percentage points above average, but below that threshold we're looking for at 14%. They have grown their revenues, earnings, and free cash flows over the last five years, and they've just very marginally diluted shareholders, so they're growing on a per share basis. However, it doesn't look like Heineken's average free cash flows support their current net debt position, and so that may be something you would want to do more research on. On both an average and a current basis of their free cash flows to their enterprise value, it doesn't look like Heineken would be offering us a risk premium in comparison to the yield of the 10-year treasury at today. Looking at their dividend profile, while they did cut their dividends in 2020, the business has been growing their dividends since then, and the business has healthily been able to support their dividend payouts in all five of these years. Finally, performing a discounted cash flow analysis of Heineken if you've done the work and you believe that those historical growth assumptions are accurate and applicable for the business, and you are ideally seeking a 15% rate of return, that a potential fair value for the business is right around $41 per share. So again, that's just slightly above the business's 52-week lows, and that's about $9 below their current stock price. So keep in mind that, again, there are reasons why that may not be potentially accurate for the business. So it's worth reiterating that this type of analysis is not financial advice. It's not a buy or sell recommendation of any security. And before considering any potential investment decision, 
please consult with your financial advisor. This analysis instead serves as a beginning and holistic understanding to help you determine whether it's worth your time and energy to dig in and learn more about Heineken. One resource that will definitely help you stay up to speed with what's going on in the market and help you learn more about the business is Seeking Alpha. Checking out Seeking Alpha directly supports the channel as I'm part of their affiliate program. So most of you probably know Seeking Alpha as a source of community written articles on different stocks. But over the past little while, they've actually become a lot more than that with their new offering, which is Seeking Alpha Premium. Premium has a number of different features where you can track buy, hold, and sell ratings on your favorite stocks. These ratings are from the Seeking Alpha community, Wall Street analysts, and Seeking Alpha's algorithm. You can see earnings call transcripts, investor presentations, SEC filings, and press releases all in one place. You can add your own margin of safety targets and get alerts for when your favorite stocks hit that level. You can get unlimited access to Seeking Alpha articles, and you can take tailor your rating experience based on the type of investor you are. You can get 10 years of financial data on any stock to help you with your analysis. You can also import your portfolio into your Seeking Alpha dashboard to make researching easier. And if that didn't convince you, the best thing is that an annual plan is only 119 bucks. That's just 33 cents per day through my referral link down in the description below. Normally premium is $239, but if you use my link, it's 50% off. So check it out if you're interested. So as a value investor, you're ultimately trying to conduct this research as if you're going to own 100% of a business and you can truly understand the ins and outs of that company and understand what's important and what's not important for the business going forward. Through this deeper research, you'll learn more about the qualitative and the quantitative aspects of Heineken and you'll likely be able to determine for yourself what a reasonably appropriate intrinsic value for the company will be. So with that said, that's it for today's fundamental stock analysis of Heineken NV, ticker symbol H-E-I-N-Y, Heine. Again, this is the company's over-the-counter listing and with the business checking the box on three of our six metrics, it looks like Heineken has a moderate level of attractiveness for further research into the business. So I'm happy to make an analysis of the company today. And if you enjoyed today's video, please be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel for more stock analysis videos, and comment down below what business you want me to take a look at next time. Thanks for learning about Heineken with me and have a great day.